So in a previous video, I uh, used a, a neural network for linear regression for a simple data set, uh, right, and found that there's, uh, if I run enough epochs, for example, 15,000 in this case, there's some overfitting, uh, right? So the validation points here in yellow have larger errors than the training points, which are in blue. Um, one way to deal with this is, is simply to stop when the L2 loss for the validation uh, is at a minimum. That's called early stopping. Another regularization method uh, I'll talk about here, uh, and that is called uh, L2, um, L2 regularization or weight decay. Uh, so here I have printed out the weights uh, after the last epoch. And so as you can see, so the weights, they start with values between minus 1 and 1. And as you can see, some of these weights here are actually quite large. And that is a sign of overfitting. So uh, one way to prevent overfitting is uh, to try to avoid uh, large weight values. And so the way you do that is that you sort of pretend that you add an extra term to the loss, to the L2 loss that depends on uh, the weights squared. So the larger the weights are, uh, right, the more, the larger your L2 value will be. So, so one way to keep your L2 small, one way is to reduce the error, but another way is to keep, to reduce or to keep L2 small is to keep the weights small, right? And so that manifests itself here in the gradient. So when I calculate the gradient here, I get an extra term. Uh, which keeps the update of the weights uh, from, from getting, giving weights that are too large. Uh, so that's what I want to implement here. So uh, one thing here, you have an alpha, that's called the weight decay factor, and that is some, some hyperparameter that you have to adjust. So to implement that, let's go up here um, and define alpha, uh, which is usually called WD for weight decay, and we're going to use some small value here, and then I have to go down here um, where I compute the gradient, right? And so for each, for the gradient of the hidden error, hidden output error, right, I now have to add an extra term. All right, so I'm adding an extra term here that is the weight decay constant times uh, the hidden output weights in this case. So this is if only have one point, but just like for the gradient, right, if we have several points, we need uh, the average. Like so. And I then need to do the same for the input hidden. Okay. Now you could also uh, think that here you should, um, you should add similar terms uh, to the L2 loss and the L2 validation loss, but, but that's not really true, right? You're just, uh, what you're interested in, you're still interested in reducing this error, right? Especially the L2 uh, validation, right? Because when, when, you, when you eventually apply your model to a prediction, when you're not training it, right? You, you, you don't have this extra gradient term. The extra gradient term is just there for the training. So I don't need to add a, a weight decay term here to the actual loss function. Okay, let's see if that helped overfitting. So actually, let's go down here first and see what this looks like. Yes, you can see it looks quite uh, different now, and, and the, you get a minimum here uh, for the validation at the same point uh, where you get a minimum um, for the, the, the training set, right? So this is actually uh, one way to avoid 
uh, overfitting, even if you're taking a lot of steps here in the epochs. So let's see what the actual function looks like. Right, and so as you can see here again, um, it looks very similar to the curve we got from the early stopping. Uh, and the main point here is that the error, the error for the validation points are really no larger than some of the errors for the training set. And so that's a, a sure sign that we've avoided under.